Hello, it's Maggie, the Cheshire Crafter here. Now, about a year ago, I made a quilt for a friend and I made it on a lazy Sunday afternoon when the Commonwealth Games was on the television. Today, I'm going to do something in a different design, but using the same fabric. And today is a cloudy, rainy Sunday afternoon. So I want to evoke summer with this. So I'm going to use colourful fabrics that remind me of my recent trip to Southport. Come to the kitchen with me and I'll show you how I do it. All my fabric is 100% cotton and I'm starting off with half a jelly roll. This is 25 42 inch jelly roll strips in five designs and this fabric is from Rose and Hubble. You saw me use it last year and it's delightful to sew with. Five different designs. And I'm going to add to it white cotton for yardage for a border and repeat the fabric for the outer trim. And the colours that I'm using in this remind me of the 99 flake that I bought in Southport. This is a fridge magnet. This evokes the summer and all the colours that are in this are in this 99 flake. So I'm going to call this the 99 flake quilt. It's nothing more summery than that, is there? So I'm at my kitchen table today and I'm going to use my Singer Heavy Duty sewing machine. Uh, you can see a difference from last time. I've added some LED lights on the inside, which makes it uh, much brighter for me to see. I've got a uh, Silco 36 weight gold thread in the top and the bobbin, threaded up already. I've changed my needle and I've put a 9014 needle in. And I've added my quarter inch seam line, a quarter inch seam is important on this project. So I've used the hemline tape and the hemline magnetic tool and I've measured from the midline. I've got my sewing machine set up at the midline with the um, needle and my stitch length is 2.5. Right, let's get some fabric and start sewing. I'm going to sew my jelly roll strips to together, right sides together, but with a quarter inch seam. I want to repeat this on all the jelly roll strips with the patterns in the same position. You'll notice I haven't cut the selvages off and there's no point doing a back stitch at this stage. I'm going to cut into this. So I'm just going to do a straight stitch and off we go. <laughs> As it's quite boring, I'm listening to music through my headphones. I've got Madonna on at the moment. It's 1980s music. She's singing that she's living in a material world. How appropriate. So am I. I've now got five strips and I've taken it to the ironing board and I'm pressing the seams in one direction. Doesn't matter which direction. Just the same direction. I'm going to do that on all five strips and then turn them over and iron them on the front so that they're nice and flat. Now I'm going to fold it over so that I've got right sides together and I'm going to sew down this raw edge to create a tube. I'm not going to, I'm not going to iron this flat. I'm going to leave this rounded. <laughs> I now have five long tubes. I've taken it to the cutting mat and I've laid it straight on my cutting mat. I want this to lie as flat as I can, but I've not ironed this piece. First thing I'm going to do is to cut off those selvages. I'm going to use my easy rule and a sharp blade on my clover rotary cutter. And now that I've got a good straight edge, I'm going to place my ruler on. I'm going to cut this into two and a half inch strips and as you can see I've already marked with my purple tape 
so I've got the purple tape lined up on the edge and I've got a matching edge here and I'm going to cut here and I'm going to do that to cut two and a half strips all the way down this tube. I've managed to get 16 pieces cut from this one tube and I've stacked them in layers of five. So I've got three fives, one left over, and this is my leftover bit. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to cut the selvages off, and then I've got a little bit of leftover patchwork, which I'll use in a later project. I'm able to cut enough to get 16 blocks out of this, given that each block will take five pieces. I could either do my patchwork as three across and five down using 15 pieces but I've decided to make it square using four across four down so I need 16 blocks let me show you now what I do to create each block I'm going to use my clover seam ripper and I'm going to start on picking seams now you'll notice that I've got two of these blocks facing one way and three I've turned upside down on the first strip I'm going to unpick this seam on the second strip, I'm going to unpick this seam. On the third block, I'm going to unpick this seam. And on the fourth, this seam. And on the fifth, this seam. So it's important that you keep them in order. And now you've got 25 squares, which we're going to arrange with the plain fabric going across the diagonal and each other's will stagger down. I'm going to iron these before I attach them together, right sides together, one to two, two to three, three to four and four to five. That is our block. As you press your seams, if you press the odd ones up and the even ones down, then you'll find that when you try to pin them together, the seams will nest and that will help your block lay flat. I'm not going to be cutting into these blocks. So now as I sew each row, I'm going to do a back stitch at the beginning and the end of each row of stitching. I in the block and now I'm going to repeat that process on all 16 blocks. Taking the dominant fabric, which in my case is the plain fabric, I've placed four blocks together and th that diagonal will form a cross. I'm going to sew this together now like a four patch and I'm going to do that four times around the 16 block patchwork piece. It, I'll also get a diamond in a few places. Let's see what look, that looks like when it's sewn together. I've laid the patchwork out on my bed and I've done it in a four patch where the dominant pattern on mine, it's the plain piece, forms an X. And then I've put the two pieces together where the patterns don't match. It means that in the centre I'll get a block of four like this and then in the centre of this one I'll get a block of four like this. And when we stand back we get a cross across the diagonal and a diamond that comes together rather like a round the world quilt. And I'll try and photograph that for you. I'm now going to sew it together. Uh, row one, row two, row three, row four and then columns one to two two to three three to four together and i'm going to test this in grayscale too find like me that although i've lined these up once i've sewn them they're not meeting up it's because the presser foot is pushing two layers of fabric through at different levels when it hits the point sorry when it hits the point here and um, it's meeting six layers of fabric at once and it's pushing the top layer down so i have to unpick this i'm going to change to my walking foot and see if i can remedy that
so I've now got a piece of patchwork that's about 40 inch square and I want to make it longer at top to bottom than at the sides. So when I add the borders, I'm going to add a header and a footer that are wider than the side borders. And I'm going to add two borders on. First of all, I'm going to separate the patchwork from the outer border. So I'm going to put a white border and then a yellow border before I add the trim. <laughs> 